What is going on guys? Rodney here with Crypto Bros. Welcome to today's video. Today we are doing an ICO review on Fondo Network. Fondo Network is a UK based exchange that will be launching in the later part of the year. They kind of have a couple different competitive advantages that they're bringing to the market. We will talk about that in this video. I do have two or three quick house cleaning things to clean up. Um, one, because this is an ICO review, that means we are doing a $50 Ethereum giveaway. To enter in that, all you have to do is like the video, make sure you are subscribed, and then leave your Ethereum address down below. I'll let this run till we get maybe like 50 or 70 people in this, so your chances of winning are actually fairly good. And uh, usually it takes like five or seven days, and we'll do the drawing there. Two, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, all you have to do is come over here, hit the subscribe button. Just know how much I appreciate and love every single one of you guys. And then three, I'm shooting the follow-up video um, for my Waves review here. So, I, you know, Waves is actually one of my undervalued picks for 2018. They do have a complete platform and decentralized exchange. I didn't want to do it all in one video. I'll be shooting that tomorrow. So if you want to check that out, you can. I'll post uh, the link to this video uh, in a card above. So anyway, let's talk about Fondo. So first and foremost, people are going to be like, why do we need more exchanges on there? There's already a ton out there. Um, I'm just going to rant about this for the next 60 seconds, 90 seconds, whatever. So where I think a lot of these newer exchanges are going to do well is because they've had time to see where other exchanges have maybe fallen short, whether that is user experience, whether that's high trading fees, whether it's, uh, I don't know, problems around there, slow transactions, whatever it is. All these guys have had the last three or four years or whatever it may be to look and see where the downfalls are and then fix those problems and bring a new kind of level of exchanges. We're seeing that with Mandala and then Fondue Network has also kind of carved its own little path and some of the things they're working on as well. We're going to talk about that in the videos. You know, two of their, uh, they have a couple really good competitive advantages and one is the way that ICOs are going to be launched and specifically this one or this ICO, it's called the Secured and Insured ICO. These are, are different ways to invest in the ICO that keeps the investor protected. I think that is really cool. The other thing they're really focused on is making sure that uh, ICOs feel supported. So they're going to help these guys launch, and then they're going to give them um, access to list on their exchanges. So one of the things you know we have seen um, you know, think about like a, a new ICO that comes out. Everybody wants it to be listed on Binance, but that charge is so expensive um, to get to, to be listed on Binance that they're going to kind of offer these guys a very nice in, um, add some liquidity to them, kind of like what Bancor does with some of these ICOs, you know, get that liquidity piece. So that is what they're focused on. Uh, before we dive into this, I'll just quickly go through this part. Uh, their pre-sale, which is going on right now, ends July 23rd. Current price of one token is two cents. And they are basically at $3 million of the $5 million soft cap. So they're on their way there. Um, once the pre-sale is over and it goes to the crowd sale, the price will go up to $0.04. Cents. They are accepting Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, but I, again, the meat and bones of this uh, video is the way that they're accepting these kind of different um, investment uh, plans that way the investor is protected and we'll jump in all that in just a minute um, fairly fairly solid scores here between uh, track ICO ICO bizarre ICO holder and ICO I think it's greed I've never used that one before but good scores here I, I like how they post you take it for what it's worth a little screenshot of their actual platform we'll get a we'll get a better look at that when we flip over to one of these screens but um this video kind of talks about their core values. Definitely worth checking out. I think you'll kind of see where they're kind of uh, positioning themselves in terms of a competitive advantage. One thing they will be doing, and, and that is worth noting, you know, when they launch their token sale, um, you know, there's going to be two million of their FDC tokens up for grabs. They're going to be doing a coin burn, kind of following the same um, same path as Binance and KuCoin shares and focusing on the um, the price points and, and how valued their token is. So I like that piece as well. They're going to essentially burn it all the way down to 50 million tokens from um, from uh, 200 million over the course of the next year. They, they're they focusing, obviously, liquidity, helping ICOs get launched. And then some competitive, I don't necessarily know if these are competitive advantages, but some things that they are or features that they have. So it says, Fondo Network has the lowest transactions fees and listing fees. What they're offering is a 100% um, free trading pair with the FDC token. So if you, you know, send uh, whatever, if you send Ethereum onto their exchange, exchange that for FDC, 
and then use that as kind of your trading platform. There's 100% free with altcoin trading pairs. That's pretty cool. They're doing this big affiliate commission push, essentially saying, you know, I, I don't have an affiliate link. I'm not pushing one out there for anyone to sign up. But you know, if I was, you could sign up under me, and I would collect 70% of any transaction fees for the first six months. Um, they're also doing unlimited withdrawals, so it's not like this one Bitcoin a day thing. And then the other big piece that has like the ICO or new altcoin listing in um, piece in there is it says a 100% free of charge wallet and creation of smart contracts for the ICO. So very cool all in that regard. As we keep working our way down, this just gets into the um, token economics. Again, total supply, 200 million. They will be burning that down. Soft cap, 5 million. Hard cap, 34 million. And uh, once we get into this part, it just talks about the distribution of their token, how things are going to run, who's getting what. The big thing here, in my opinion, um, uh, of their distribution of funds, 25% is going into uh, marketing. The other 50% is going into research, uh, development, kind of improving upon their platform. I think... For the most part, though, anyone who's launching a new um, exchange really has to take into consideration uh, the user needs and focus there, right? It's very easy for some of these different exchanges to really charge high fees, take advantage of people who want to get into crypto. In fact, actually, and I didn't plan this out, this just happened to um, to kind of fall in place, but uh, John McAfee tweeted about hit BTC, and I'll, I'll read this here. It says, the crypto exchanges have become... Um, the thing that we originally fought against. Their power is immense. Hit BTC, for example, has increased suffering for millions of poor people who cannot afford the minimum buy-in since it is greater than their monthly income. Boycott them. So again, just another uh, a problem that these guys are trying to solve with this uh, with these lower fees. Um, sorry, tangent. I did, totally didn't mean to get off track here. But um, as we work down into their team, I don't want to go through each one of the, these. What I will say is I like the fact that you can go check out their LinkedIn. I've went through them. Um, solid dudes all have, or, or solid team, they all have a ton of experience in uh, big banking. You know, their um, CEO, Edward Rogers, he, uh, he's actually on the, uh, has worked for Barclay Group. He was, I think, there for 12 years. This guy right here, technical advisor of BBC. Um, this dude over here, HSBC, um, formal, formal financial administrator. Um, what else do we got? Uh, this guy worked as financial security expert at Lloyd's Baking Group. So again, we see the same uh, kind of overlapping concept. A lot of dudes who worked in big banking, and I think that's where some of these ideas came from to kind of launch this secured um, and insured ICO we can just kind of quickly check out their roadmap. I think the biggest thing here to know is that the, they're not launching their exchange until Q4. Um, so yeah, all that good stuff. Now really, the meat and bones of this whole uh, project here is talking about their SE ICO and what those things mean. And we'll go through this. This is just a chart that kind of shows what each or what are the benefits of each. Right here is the common ICO, right? You can buy into this just like any other ICO, or you can do these two other plans um, and how they work. Again, it's called Secure ICO or Insured ICO. Super cool concepts. I don't exactly know how they'll play out because I've never seen this before, but we're gonna read through these two things and then we will wrap this video up. So the first one is the Secured ICO and it says, um, Secured ICO by the ICO right of the purchase. Just prepay part of the value of the ICO package purchased and track the progress of the project. When the tokens of the project increase in price, the investor can pay the rest to receive the token with the original ICO price. So we'll go through an example here. It says, for example, Sarah uses $500 to, to buy 10,000 secured ICO packages, like 10,000 of, of the, um, the tokens using the secured plan, um, worth $1,000. So she uses $500 to buy 10,000 secured ICO packages worth $1,000. Uh, first, Sarah will receive 5,000 tokens, then the token price increases several times on the floor. Sarah can still use uh, $500 to buy the remaining 5,000 tokens um, to either sell those or enjoy the difference. Uh, if she feels the ICO is out of reach or starting to go down or dropping, Sarah can stop investing without uh, being bound by any condition. So super interesting concept there. Like you can buy in with half, see how well the, the token price does. If it goes up, you can continue to buy in 
um, at the old price and then do whatever you want with it. I've never seen that before. I'm not exactly sure how that will work out, but I like the fact that they're focused on the investor and how their um, and their safety of their funds. The other method is the insured ICO. And this is um, guaranteed by the value of the payment of the currency. This is really interesting too. Um, so one, they are accepting BTC and ETH. And then it says, if after purchase um, of the FDC token, and BTC and ETH continue to increase in value while the project is still in the in development stage, investors will be reimbursed the difference from the purchase price. Crazy. The biggest advantage for the insured ICO safety um, to invest more than any other conventional ICO many times. So then it says, for example, John invested for or invested in the insured ICO plan for one ETH when Ethereum was equal to $500 in USD. When, at, when the ETH price raises to $800, John will be able to get a refund for $300 in Ethereum depending on the time that John decided uh, to buy in. As such, John still has his tokens that he bought um, with in or on top of his ETH profits. Uh, man, if I butcher that, I'm really sorry. I hope you guys pick it up. So, But it says, in this case, if ETH reduced to $400 USDT, John still has his, um, his investment of the tokens with no damage at all. So really interesting piece there. So again, if you buy in with, I should have just explained this. I feel like that was hard to read. Um, so if you buy in with 500 bucks uh, or one Ethereum, the price of Ethereum goes up to 800. You still keep your tokens. They refund you the 300 bucks there. That's that's crazy, right? Because with some of these other ICOs, when it's ICO season, you know, Ethereum price went way, way up. And then these ICO um, companies had way more Ethereum than what they needed. And a lot of them sold it off and took profits there. They're saying we're not going to do that. So I think that's very admirable. How all that will work out, I do not know. But anyway, guys, that is what I have for you. I really like the concepts that these guys have going on. I really like the fact that they are forward thinking thinking about the user as as well as, uh, or from an investment standpoint, as well as the new projects that are going to be onboarded. So anyway, that is all I have for you this evening. Um, make sure you enter into the, uh, the giveaway. I'm excited to give away 50 bucks. And then two, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would love to have you. Anyway, guys, have a great night. See ya.